Hello and welcome to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and this is episode 12 of Let's Play The Hand of Glory. So, if you saw the last episode, you see that I struggled significantly on this puzzle. And I was on the right track. However, someone says that I need to pick up. Or, no, I need to, I need to look at I never looked at what this Engraving was. Engraving seemed to resemble the shape of the desk. But every row of drawers was marked by a musical key and a series of Roman numerals. I remembered seeing the sheet music previously on Catherine's piano. What if the musical references were connected somehow? Oh, my word, that's all I had to do was... I didn't click on it. I just saw it and automatically just presumed that it would clock. Ugh, that was, uh... That's annoying. So hopefully that's moved the puzzle along a little bit. But yeah, thanks for sticking around the last one, because that was like a good 10-15 minutes of the video, wasn't it, me trying to figure it out? The engraving I found on Molsberg's desk contained a musical reference that seemed to match those on the sheet music. I realized that the two clues were connected. Ooh. The sheet music was the key that would let me unravel the secrets hidden in that desk. I remembered Molsberg's words when he confessed to me that he knew nothing about music. Thankfully, because I was a disaster too. The sheet music, therefore, had to conceal a code not strictly connected to music. The musical notes must have to be interpreted another way. Okay. So that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> he says confidently. Yeah, they seem side by side now. See what the he says The engraving seemed to resemble the shape of the... The same thing. Ruling out the two erased lines of the pentagram, three remained, each marked by a different musical key. Were the notes on the sheet music a reference to the drawers of the desk? I also noticed something written on top. Allegro Aperto. In music, that means something like a cheerful open. Cheerful open, right. Well, I don't really figured out that these were, so this line, this line, and this line, as you can see here, are just the drawers, aren't they? So, Allegro Aperto. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So ignore that top one and ignore this third one. Maybe we have a look at um, this dot, this little dot here. I'm going to see how many times it appears. There's one there, there's one there, there's two there. So hold on, let's 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 figure out how to do this. So the top drawer. So maybe we open this drawer which is here, this drawer which is here, and then that drawer which is here, that drawer which is here, and then that drawer, and then that drawer. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We open six drawers all in all. No idea what these Roman numerals are for. Maybe I've got it totally wrong. Let's let's give it a go. So let's let's shut them all first. So nothing to do with the actual music. Okay, right. Let's do this then. So what did I say? Um, top one is that one, that one. So number two and three. Number two, three. One three, one three, two three, one three, one three. No, nothing. Didn't say anything, did he? Right. I'm also looking at it. Going. Let's close these drawers again. Because it's just a dot, isn't it? Just a dot. So maybe, where is it? Maybe we do just this one. So one, and then just the, the two. So there's two there. So make a difference. One, two, three. So it could be number three, number one, and three, and number one. So three, one, three, one. Three, one, three, one. Say anything? No, anything? No. Hmm. 
feel like I'm on the right track, but I'm not entirely, entirely sure. Um. Hmm. What are the Roman numerals got to do with anything? Maybe we could do one. Hmm. Not too sure. I can't be stuck on this for for a, an entire episode. Maybe because that's got a dot after it, they might not might not use it. So we'll do we'll do two, three, three, one, three. Come on. Two, three, three, one, three. No. Oh man, I'm struggling again. Let's go off here. What else can we do? What else can we do? Um, let's have a look at this. Let's show the picture of Alice, hoping she can make something of it. Um, all right, should we go to Alice? Let's go to Alice. Eric Molsberg's room hid something. I had very little time to discover what. Oh, God. Okay. Right, we've got to... We can do this. We can do this. We can absolutely do this. I'm confident. Otherwise, this Let's Play is going to go on for 15 years. Okay? Alright, let's have another quick look at it. Got a feeling. I've got a feeling it's that one, then that one. But what what's to do with the two there's these Roman numerals? Maybe we do it backwards. So one, three. One, three. Is that right? One, three, one, three, two. Oh god, I don't know. I don't know. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. One, three, one. I knew that desk was hiding something. Sucked. Gotta say it out loud. That puzzle blows. Right. Well done. Well done, me, for just nonchalantly just clicking buttons. Anyway, we did it. Well done. Secret compartment. What with my hands shaking with emotion, I grabbed the folder. A folder? I was prepared for anything, but what I found on that paper left me speechless. Oh, come on. <gasps> Uh -oh. What do you think you're doing in my room? Who let you enter? Normally, I'd have a pair of sarcastic answers for you, but right now, I've completely lost my sense of humor. How do you explain this? <gasps> wow. You. This is an abuse of power. First, someone leaves the phone receiver off, costing me a $10 million deal, and now this? You snuck in here and rummaged through my private documents without a warrant. You keep on dodging the questions that really matter, Mr. I have a broken heart, please bring my daughter back. Your daughter was pregnant, and you knew that. And on top of that, you concealed the documents that proved it. I don't know if it's clear enough. But this makes you the prime suspect on my list. Who's the father? The guy in the picture I showed you? Answer me, goddammit. Enough! Leave this residence immediately and never come back. And I assure you, you'll be hearing from me very soon. I could say the same thing. So young Catherine was pregnant at the time of the kidnapping. 
Was wow. it possible that was the motive? And what was her father's role in the whole story? Had he hidden the medical records to preserve his daughter's dignity, or to hide a motive that would have been a red flag for the authorities? Night had fallen by then. Initially, I thought of going straight to bed and falling asleep. Then, I was suddenly struck by a brilliant idea. <laughs> that was We're cool. switching over to local news now, where we direct your attention to a curious case that happened today in West Miami. The well-known Chef Tony was arrested after many clients in his restaurant began showing worrying physical symptoms. The police report has identified the cause of the patron's collective discomfort as some meatballs, apparently prepared using dog meat. The chef defended himself, claiming he had given instructions for the making of the dish to an elusive sous chef of whom no traces can now be found. What can we say? If it's a pet-friendly local establishment you're looking for, Tony's Restaurant could really be your thing. Yeah. Absolute number one, intern. Isn't that because you're playing against yourself, Mr. Number One? If someone had tried socializing rather than carrying around her job, we would not still be here arguing about it. So, at the current state of things, I am the undisputed number one, and that's that. In the meantime, your someone might have found something by analyzing the picture that was slipped under your door. I couldn't find any information on the man in the company of Catherine Molesberg, but the logo visible on the building gave me a lead to follow. It's a decommissioned factory belonging to a company called Fallen Rose, for which I've written the address down. Unfortunately, there was no way to... Yes, yes, all right, it's all very compelling. But we'll think about the factory tomorrow. Now put down that infernal device and let me see what you've got. You really had it coming, small time detective. What do you think about that? That was beginner's luck. And this? That, that was clearly a foul. So we went bowling. I found a surprise uh, waiting for me. Oh. Mr. Bundy, I was just looking for you. Am I late with the rent? The rent is the least of your problems right now. There are people, Mr. Bundy, who find your investigation really bothersome. You were sent by Molesberg, weren't you? No, I don't want to give him the name Molesberg. I don't need your fake warnings. Now get out of my way. I'm afraid I can't do that. Wait! What? What? That's gonna be a dream. <laughs> Oops. You were sent by Molesberg, weren't you? The Lord thinks he can scare me with his two-bit intimidation tactics. But I have absolutely no intention of stopping. I'll bring the truth to the light. Even if a whole empire has to fall because of it. That's all I need to know. Wait! <laughs> oh dear. Got more lives than a cat. Alright, I guess I've got to listen. I'm listening. Cooperate, and maybe there will be no unpleasant consequences. Many influential forces are at work in this story, Mr. Bundy. Are you talking about Molesberg? Did he send you? I don't want to talk about Molesberg now. I've been shot. What forces are you talking about precisely? I'll take the bait. Okay, yeah, I don't want to get shot. Take the bait. What are these forces at work want from me? That you don't try to push beyond your capabilities. That you accept your place as an insignificant exile and spend the rest of your life in the shadows. You have a choice to make, Bundy. Choose wisely. Okay, I've got the case. I've worked very hard to get. Um, let's get shot. I've worked very hard to get to this point. I can't quit the case. Catherine's life is at stake. A praiseworthy and daring choice, but wrong. Go, Wait. go! Ah, oh, Fraggle Rock. Do I have to do the whole conversation again? Alright, oh, okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Many influent. Right. What forces are you talking about precisely? You'd be surprised to find out. However, you'll never learn anything about it. I've worked my whole life to expose the truth, and you won't be the one to stop me. Okay, I'm so gonna get shot again. But still, stupid choice. 
wait. <laughs> right, okay. So we have to click the right buttons. The right dialogue tree. I am listening. I'm listening. Although, again, cooperate. Many influence. Blah, 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 blah. Take the bait. Take the bait. That you don't. That you ex. You well, have I, guess, a I guess we'll quit the case then. Okay. I quit the case. Really, it's not a matter that concerns me. I'm sorry for the girl, but in the end, these things happen. The important thing is that they don't happen to yourself. You just made the best choice of your life. Oh, Bundy. Just some advice. Let this be our last meeting. The guy had been clear and explicit. I could be sure that if I didn't comply with his demand for answers, he'd kill me without giving it a second thought. My rational size urged me to really let it go. Goodbye case, goodbye challenge, goodbye unsolved mysteries, and goodbye Catherine. But no, I couldn't leave that girl to her destiny. Her father did something horrible to her. He had hidden the truth from the world, maybe even going so far as having his own flesh and blood kidnapped or even killed. No way I'll give up. I am. I am. I am up against the wall. Wow. He was that creepy figure. November the 14th, Lars's apartment. Things just get better and better. I had fallen asleep with my clothes on. That visit the previous night had shaken me more than I wanted to admit. Well, that must be Alice. The door is open. Come in. Hey, intern. Welcome. Hello, Lars. Do you always leave the door open? Yeah, of course. So, the delivery boy can leave me the harbinger at the door and I can do this? Hey, Alice. Look at that. Did they finally find Ramos? Much better. Today, the harbinger is giving out firecrackers to celebrate the 50-year anniversary of the opening of the newspaper. You get excited over very little sometimes. But it's a pop-up. One of those kinds that explodes if you throw it on the ground. So cool. I was expecting different furnishings. It looked more like a guy with a toilet in the bedroom. Everything was more or less already like this when I got here. It... Hey, what do you mean by I look more like a guy? Well, at this point, I'd say it's best to leave behind the beating I gave you last night and focus on the job. Are you talking about when the ball slipped and landed on my foot? Or when you elbowed me in the stomach mimicking your lar swing? Well... I did get a strike, right? Yes, in another alley. Try to make yourself at home. As I was trying to tell you yesterday evening, I couldn't trace any information about the man in Catherine's company. Which is quite strange, considering that I have total access to all the government databases in the world. But this can be explained in perfectly legal ways, and in any case, it doesn't help us with the investigation. On the other hand, I found some information about the symbol appearing in the background, which identifies a company called Fallen Rose. Huh. It doesn't sound familiar. What is it? The company itself did business in many sectors, but the Miami headquarters specialized in building materials. From the archives, I couldn't find anything suspicious. All above board until they declared bankruptcy last year. But here's the kicker. Although the company is supposedly bankrupt, I found signs of recent activity by analyzing surveillance camera footage in the neighborhood. So, they're still there. Maybe I could. Alice, I need access to that factory. This very day. It could be risky, but I certainly won't stop you. I feel this case could really push my career years ahead. And by the way, my zealous detective, I think it's time you tell me everything you know about the case we're investigating. Alright, at this point I can't deny you deserve it. Okay, let's start from the beginning. That is to say... The night I tracked down Ramos. Yeah. It's got a montage. This is, in broad terms, what pushed me to investigate the Molesberg case. I'm still not totally clear on the relevance of the porn magazine. Oh, that? Wait, I can explain that in more D. Doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> it's really absurd. How did you manage to get yourself involved in a case like this? This could be my big chance at redemption, Ellis. I'm not ready to surrender yet. I get it, but now... I 
I'd better get back to the office. I really can't afford to be late. I'll leave with you then. I expect this will be a very emotional day. Well, see you later then. Alice's contribution was crucial, giving me another lead to follow. An abandoned factory belonged to the Fallen Rose. I figured I should also swing by Nancy's. Maybe I would be able to talk to the mysterious homeless guy, Roger. Come to think of it. This was the day I was also supposed to have my interview with that leech, Gwendolyn Pratt. I had serious doubts about what to do. Maybe it would be better to go back to Ramos's house to face that shrew. Wow, lots to do. Lots of information taken in there. New map part added. And, uh, yeah. Wow. That happened quite quick. So where do we, where should we go? Warehouse. Back to Ramos's house. Abandoned factory. Okay. Back to David Ramos's house. Or maybe there, the promenade, where we meet the, the homeless guy. Um, let's go there. There he is. You are Roger the Tramp, aren't you? Firstly, the term tramp is now considered inconsiderate, and the preferred nomenclature is homeless person or transient. Secondly, it is very rude to address a stranger by name without introducing oneself first. I beg your pardon, but I didn't realize I was in the presence of the Baron of Sussex. Do not be absurd, boy. I'm not the Baron of Sussex. I'm Duke Roger Emerith Ravenish the Third from Derbyshire. Yet you live on a bench and you have a torn shoe. I also rummaged through the refuse, to be completely honest. This guy was a real madman. Well, uh, Duke Ravendish, may I ask you a few questions? I am at your disposal, uh, at least for the present moment. Right. So, are you an actual nobleman? Don't care. Do you remember where you were two nights ago? That's it. Do you remember where you were two nights ago? At Chef Tony's. A modest five-star restaurant located in the West Miami district. You answered with extraordinary promptness. I stick to my weekly schedule precisely. It's a carryover from my old life. I see. Uh, do you remember if you saw or heard anything strange? Hmm. M might you be a detective, young man? Of course I am. Do you want to see my badge? Your poor attempt at dressing like Sir Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle's character is enough for me. <laughs> What's your point? If you are a detective, it means that you are a representative of the authorities, or at least you are in contact with them. Ergo, you can help me save my Camarops Umilis. Your what? My dwarf palm. Uh, my shelter from the warm, sultry summer days in Miami. I have spent my afternoons basking in the shade of its leaves for years. And now, it is at risk. Explain. Recent studies have revealed the presence of the Red Blatodia on these picturesque beaches, a disturbing and voracious insect that can prove lethal to these plants. My palm was judged to be sick, which was clearly a rush evaluation. <laughs> Just a glance will suffice to see that it is in perfect health. I think I understand what you're getting at. But I have to point out that someone could consider this an attempt at bribery. I am not offering goods in exchange for a service. Any assistance would simply bring peace to my disturbed mind and therefore encourage me to remember. The man was used to these kinds of negotiations. He sure knew how to bargain. All right, let's see what I can do for your palm tree. Make that red mark disappear, and then you may ask what you will. Oh, right, so what if I ask you to... Right, he's not gonna. He's not gonna answer that. Don't leave he? the country, Duke Ravendish. I would be reviled for doing so. So let's just have a quick look in our inventory to see if we have anything that can. What's pop pop? Oh, that's what we got out in the newspaper this morning. Anything that we could erase the red thing from on the t tree already? Maybe balm. Don't know. Nothing. Maybe a marker. Can we colour it in? Making the mark darker wouldn't have deceived the pest control workers. That mark had to disappear if I wanted to obtain Roger's help. Okay, well let's try the balm. Let's try the balm on it. 
I was all out of ideas. Nope. Right. I think we're going to call it time on this episode and uh, investigate the rest of the map tomorrow. So uh, if you have enjoyed this episode, uh, please give it a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And until next time, you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is you're doing right now. And take care.